Good morning, everybody. Uh, I want to start by thanking Veronica uh, and everyone at the Progressive Policy Institute for putting this event together. And I want to thank um, uh, all the panelists for their uh, outstanding advocacy and leadership in this space. Um, the work that you've done has really made a difference, and I think uh, we will move this country forward. Um, on the net, women have lost a net of 5.4 million jobs during this pandemic. The jobs from December tell the whole story. That month, the economy suffered a net loss of 140,000 jobs, but men gained 16,000 jobs. That means every net job lost belonged to a woman, and almost all of them belonged to a woman of color. We know that their families and our economy cannot recover without getting women back to work. First, uh, we have to address the fact that if kids can't go to school, women can't return to the workforce. Our schools are not just the foundations for the success for our children, but they're also critical to the success of women, families, and communities. When schools can't operate normally, nothing can. That's why I fought so hard in the American Rescue Plan to include $130 billion to help our schools implement the CDC guidelines, make the much needed improvements to their facilities and HVAC systems, and make it safe for teachers and students to return to the classroom. And as we continue working to cover, to recover and rebuild the economy, we need to build a better system that the one that left too many women with no choice but to leave their jobs and schools uh, when schools were closed for in-person learning. Our economy, our economic infrastructure has been failing women and families for years and it has crumbled in the face of this pandemic. When we talk about building new infrastructure, we need to talk about what it really takes to allow everyone to reach their full economic potential so that our economy can also reach its full economic potential. So that's why I've been pushing the American Families Plan. I called on President Biden to include universal paid leave and medical leave in his plan and all signs point to his proposal making a significant investment in paid leave. I first introduced the Family Act, which would create permanent universal paid leave in 2013. And now, not even a decade later, we stand on the precipice of implementing a policy that will transform our economy and ensure that America, American workers, especially our women, are no longer forced to choose between their families and their paychecks. Having paid leave will mean that when families face emergencies, women won't have to leave their jobs and step off their career ladder knowing that they may never get back on again or have to start over from the bottom rung. I will fight alongside President Biden to pass this critical legislation in the Senate. We also need to invest in the care economy so that women have someone they can trust to care for their children or their aging parents during the workday. Right now, families may have to wait as long as five years to get the home care services they need for loved ones who are aging or disabled. That's five years out of the workforce for someone who needs to stay home and provide that care. I was so glad to see President Biden prioritize funding for caregiving in the American Jobs Plan. When we improve caregiving jobs with legislation like the Domestic Workers Bill of Rights, the benefits are twofold. First, we help improve the lives of people, mostly women of color who hold those jobs. And second, we make those jobs more desirable and bring more people into the caregiving workforce, helping more families get back to, to work faster. It's also critical that we increase access to quality affordable daycare. The childcare industry has been decimated over the last year as providers faced rising costs and declining enrollment. And accessing childcare was an issue even before the pandemic. It was not available. In 2018, more than half of the country lived in a child care desert, and it was not affordable. Child care for infant care can cost $15,000 a year. A mom who works full time for a minimum wage will earn $15,000 and $80 a year. So obviously, there's no way she can afford for daycare. Um, there's just no way that many people in America could afford the care that they need. So we pushed for the American Rescue Plan to address this crisis and it include $40 billion to help hard hit child care providers um, who are disproportionately women of color, cover the rising costs to provide families with additional tax credit for, their, for as much as half of their spending on child care for young children. And that, you know, we believe is the single biggest investment in child care since World War II. And we shouldn't stop there. 
We need universal pre-K. If we expect children to succeed in schools and careers of tomorrow, we have to give them a strong foundation that starts with pre-K. Congress recognized that 50 years ago with bipartisan legislation to establish universal pre-K, but President Nixon vetoed it. That's five decades where we could have been creating a better equity in our educational opportunity, preparing our children for a better future and making it easier for more women to get back to work. So we really can't wait any longer. Finally, we need to ensure that women, that when women do get back to work, that they're earning a fair and equal wage. This starts with raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. Four in five minimum wage earners are adults. Two, nearly two in three are women, and most are trying to support their families. They can't do that on $7.25 an hour. And they can't do it if they aren't earning dollar, a dollar on a dollar for the work that they do. We need to close the pay gap that pushes women, and especially women of color, further behind every day. Right now, millions of American families feel like when it comes to work, everything is working against them, and they're not wrong. Congress and state capitals have failed to keep up with the realities of our modern economy. For working parents and women especially, this new economic infrastructure is just as critical to getting work as the roads and trains that they have to take to get to the office. It will allow people to really provide for their families and give them the resources, the care, and the opportunities that they need to succeed. These changes we have needed for a long time. These is issues existed long before the pandemic and will continue to exist long after if we don't act now. This is the moment to think big and enact bold transformational policies. This is the moment to take the long view, to look at the bigger picture, and to make sure that families can not only recover from this crisis, but weather the crisis of the future. If we don't, we are only shortchanging ourselves. So thank you all for being here and being part of this work. It will take all of us, and you can count on me to keep fighting alongside you until we rebuild an economy where everyone can reach their fullest potential. Thank you.